You're kicking it with G on your favorite station. The perfect station. 92 KELZ, the only station with new music, new artists, new sound. Yo, we back in this thing. You kicking it with your boy G on 92 KELZ. Hey, we have Trill Talk Podcast in the building today. How y'all doing? We're doing fine. Okay, how are you? Yeah. I was going to say name, but I didn't want to push nobody's name. So I just, <laughs> I just decided to go with the podcast. Yeah, call, call. <laughs> so... Before we get started, I'm just going to go to the left, to the right, just go. So, Pradia, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Pradia, also known as the Cast Me Out, and I review television shows on YouTube. We're extending the uh, the content on that channel, but right now we're reviewing shows like Love and Hip Hop, Married to Medicine, Greenleaf. I reviewed the uh, Screen Resurrection, go check that out. Um, and just a whole lot of other things we have going on on the podcast, I mean, on the channel. Uh, we also have the Chill Talk podcast, as he, um, as he mentioned, and that's coming out. The first Thursday in August, right? Yeah, first Thursday in August, we're premiering the Chill Talk podcast, so be on the lookout for that. And Miss um, Blue and I are a part of another project. We're not really speaking on that yet because the ink isn't dry, but um, be on the lookout. We have a lot of things coming in 2019. So, where are you from? I'm from Houston, Texas. Okay. Where are you from here? Okay. Yeah. Straight out the next. So what about you? All right, so it's your girl, Miss Blue, aka the Rap Diva. Mm-hmm. How y'all doing? And I am from Houston, Texas, born and raised. And right now I have my single Go Off streaming on all uh, platforms. Shout out to Diggs, the producer who produced the track. And I'm doing, you know, writing the blogs. And like my co host said, we have the Trill Talk podcast coming up. So we're excited about that because we talking about everything. We're not leaving nothing out or nothing to the imagination. It's all going to be on the table. So um, just try to be transparent and let people in on me, get to know me some um, behind the scenes. So I heard you mention you're single. When did you come out with that? Well, I wrote the single about two months ago and dropped it about at the end of July. Mm-hmm. So, well, close to the mid-July. And um, basically, mm-hmm. I got a... Um, call from a guy named Diggs on Instagram and he was like I've been wanting to work with you for like a long time so I'll send you a track he sent me the track with his fire got in the studio immediately put it on wax and released it just like that it just like that <laughs> so have you been doing music for a while I've been doing music for a very long time so just a uh, long story short I kind of started around 2008 I had been doing it all through high school but um made a series in 2008 and just was on my grind doing auditions, showcases, uh, Fox 26, public access. I've opened up for like so many um, artists out here. Um, it's just, it's, it's been a long run in the game. No denying that. So, let's talk about this podcast. How, how did y'all come up with this podcast? Oh, that, um, that idea, it was almost like fate. Um, she had been wanting to be in radio for a while. Mm-hmm. I had been wanting to be either in radio or on a podcast format for a while. And um, this is before we even met. Mm-hmm. We actually met um, on the set of the project that the ink is still drawing yeah. on. So um, that's how we even met each other. And even still then, we weren't even talking about radio or podcasting. Um, through opportunities of people just seeing us, we actually linked again on another project. And that was a pilot podcast for someone else. So y'all didn't know each other outside of working on the six? No. We became friends. Through <laughs> now, now you know, we all know. When he come and dealing with business, yeah. how did you know she was the one? How did you know he was like, you know what? Okay, I can work with him. Um, I can work with him. It was, a, it was a, a learning process. You know, like, it just we became family. That's what we like to say. Like, we're, we're no longer friends. Y'all know each other? Not even a oh, while. Over a year? It's been a yeah, okay. Over a year. Okay. 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 We shot the we oh, shot the yeah. test pilot for the um the unnamed project uh like in April mm-hmm. of last year. Yeah. That's when we initially met. And then we just kinda linked together. The creator of that project and the two of us, we all started linking together and just mm-hmm. hanging out. That's pretty dope. Yeah, so after we did the podcast I, yeah, after we did the uh, pilot podcast, uh, we talked about it and we was like, we want to do this. Mm-hmm. So at first, we reached out to everybody that was a part of it. And we were mm-hmm. all going to meet up and we was looking at venues and stuff and, you know, things just weren't working out. And everybody kind of faded but us. Mm-hmm. And as we were talking, we just, one night, we were just like, what are we waiting on? Why don't we just do it ourselves? And that's what we did. And um, I think, I, for me, I realized that it was a cohesive effort when... Honestly, when we had our first argument, 
we was like arguing over stuff. We was arguing over stuff, and the fact that we were able to resolve it as friends, and it was no hard feelings, and we was just like, listen, this is what I'm trying to say. This is what I'm trying to say, and we were able to hear each other. I was like, this is this is going to work because that's what business is about. You know, I like to think of most relationships as business. It's like you have to negotiate. You know, that's how you, your that's position. How you find out who really down for you. And you go who's not? Something. Yeah, yeah, you got to go through something to really Absolutely, that's right. Absolutely. So who came up with the name? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, honestly, um, we had two different names in mind. We were trying to think of a name, and we were like, God, we, how, what are we going to come up with? Um, I came up with Trill Talk Podcast and another one, and I think she had two names. And we could not decide, mm -hmm. so we put a Twitter poll up and Trill Talk Podcast one. Mm -hmm. And we said we would honor whatever, you know. For some was. reason, every time you put trill or trap in front of something, everybody look. Mm -hmm. You know what? And that's so, that was messed up because <laughs> the one that I went with was a more, like, I felt universal. Yeah. Name. And I, we, we already said that we would not, you know, make anybody take our side. So mm, yeah. we was fair about it. And it was winning. And I was like, really? Actually, mine and hers like, were neck and neck. I was like at thirty six percent. She was like at thirty five. Like it was, it was like it was down close, to the but at the very end when we we was like, okay, y'all did it. The fans did this. We are a Trill Talk podcast, and they were so excited. Yeah. And I was like, I but mean, you know what? That's how it is though. When mm -hmm. they feel like they along the journey and they going exactly. along with yeah. you, you have more and more genuine followers. People and we wanted to make yeah. it. We wanted to make yeah. it inclusive, and we wanted exactly. to to make it like. Uh, innovative, mm -hmm. like for us, um, mm -hmm. this is one thing I, I'm sure she'll let me say. But um, we're making things different. Like for our season finale, we're going live. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. So instead of it being a pre-recorded podcast, they'll be able to interact with mm -hmm. us, and mm -hmm. we'll be talking back and forth. With so, them. what are some of the topics, and what are some of the things y'all talk about on your podcast? Oh. We do not discriminate. Yeah, we don't. We're talking about family relationships, mm -hmm. love, and hip hop, sex, scandal, sex. Mm -hmm. scandal. Did I say sex? <laughs> Yes. I mean, we talking about everything though, like seriously, like music and just like uh, religion, faith, because we're, we don't want to leave anybody out. And I feel like right. sometimes people is just being left out. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't want to talk about this. We talk about sexuality. Mm -hmm. I mean, why not talk about it? It's there. We see it. You know right. what I'm saying? So that's how you're going to get people on your side is by saying, oh, I can relate to them. Mm -hmm. I don't want, we don't want to be fake. We're trying to be as transparent as we possibly can. Right. And authentic. We want to keep that right. authenticity because we don't want to get too machine like. We want to still yeah. be relatable. You know, like um, a lot of people are growing up about um, the little. We have a, um, a super trailer that we're going to put out soon. Mm -hmm. That super trailer will, will really get. So is this movie. like a movie around the podcast or is this like the no, podcast um, leading up like, to the launch of the podcast? No, it's it's just a podcast, but we're just this is our way of promoting it. We just have like because when you see the trailer up into the things, so I'm oh. thinking movie. <laughs> mm -hmm. kind of Basically, like. a trailer just to show you what you're in for. Okay. Because we just kind of threw it out there. We're gonna be shooting a podcast, mm -hmm. and nobody knows. People have the same questions you do. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. what is this about? about? And so the one video we did post was just our outtakes. It was just us laughing and having a good time. So people still don't know mm -hmm. what's really content. Going on. Yeah. And we got over seven hundred likes. Right. Did I mention mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. we threw that out and our followers are growing up, yeah. And um, you know, and our slogan is "Ears to the Street," so that really leaves it open. We still haven't explained what we do. So mm -hmm. the um, super trailer, as we call it, it's like five minutes long. That's why I call it a super trailer mm -hmm. because it's it's gonna be on IGTV because mm -hmm. it can't be on a thing. But um, it basically shows you how far we're going and what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of controversial topics that we're covering. Um, one being colorism. Mm -hmm. We talk about that, and um, mm -hmm. it's a awesome play in contrast on conversation because you have the side and the perspective of somebody who doesn't really know the struggles that a brown skin girl goes to or a brown skin person in, in general. We talk about stuff like that and we really dig deep and you know kind of expose our own experiences to make ourselves even more relatable. I think that's pretty dope. One thing that's definitely needed especially to be able to talk about it and make everyone else comfortable to talk about it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. so, have y'all ran into like any bumps along the road to get this launch and started? Yes. Yeah. He just told you we argued. <laughs> Hey, no, I mean, but for some, yeah, know, one, of, one of the major bumps we had <laughs> was that about maybe two to two and a half years ago, Bun B had a podcast, Talk Show Talk podcast. I was just gonna say because I was never had any controversy. No, no, not yet. They haven't brought it up. No, they haven't not, mentioned Bun B. We are very big fans. Of We're Bun big B. huge fans, and that was really paying you know homage to not only him but where we come from. You know, Texas Trill. So we wanted to keep it a southern thing, but we wanted to make sure that. 
we represent in Texas because we're trying to take this on a global scale. Mm -hmm. Right. So we still want to make sure that we represent home. Yeah. So that was one of the reasons why I thought of that name. Right. And then if we do get backlash, we can blame it on our fans. Because they don't host the name. We can not blame it on the fans. You heard it. Oh, like, we did a Twitter poll and they chose the fans. We don't want no B. You just lost all your fans right now. Blame it on the fans. <laughs> Man. Yeah. So, okay, so. Like all the controversy and the topics, and of course, I mean, nobody's never going to run out of anything mm -hmm. to um, talk about. So, do, can you see it like far as expanding, or you just constantly just want to do like the red table talk version and be live? Um, I think we would love to expand, but we have boundaries simply because mm -hmm. the other project that we're connected to is something similar to that. So, uh, for instance, we talk about entertainment as a whole as opposed mm -hmm. to just you know highlighting Houston because that's what that show is about mm -hmm. so we want to make sure that we differentiate the two because we don't want to be you know sounding redundant you yeah. know right. on our broadcast and on the show like so yeah we have um we want to go global but we make sure that we shine light mm -hmm. we've talked about you know having people figures within the city come in and have a conversation with us you know just to be a part of the conversation mm -hmm. and um yeah we're thinking about different different tools that we can use to make ourselves different but still stay in the same vein of what is podcasting. Right. So outside of podcasting, let's say outside of true talk, it's more of a person like what do y'all do? Well, I know you say you rap, so is mm -hmm. this rap full time? No. I rap at this point full time, but also do acting. I do a lot of acting. So I've oh. done uh, movies. We done Pipe Dream with Jada World Production. Shout out to mm -hmm. Katrina. And um, oh my goodness, uh, I've done. So many different projects. I, I almost got lost in the sauce just now. Yeah, she is. <laughs> but she is forever crazy. yours. We did that twice. So, because uh, we brought in new characters the second time around, so that was a whole different experience. I mean, we had to, you know, we learn our lines and things like that. And then I still constantly audition all the time. And so, uh, and eventually, I'll be writing my own um, scripts pretty mm. soon. Hopefully. The next, the first one I want to do in October, like a scary film comedy. Oh, wait till y'all see that. Oh yeah, we're, 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 yeah, we're, we're going to be. <laughs> I got the job. Yes. So <laughs> yeah. that's what I do. Uh, yeah. And you, uh, you said you vlog, right? Yeah, I vlog. I'm a YouTuber. I've actually done some oh, acting as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, friend. I've done some acting as well. Um, I was in a movie called The Holy Spoof. I was in um. The, oh, I think it was 2016 All Star Gatorade commercial. Like, I've done little things here and there, and I did some songwriting. I just chose to kind of step away from the, um, the music scene because of the politics of it all. Mm -hmm. Like, I really just love music, and mm -hmm. once the business started kind of getting muddy for me, I, I just kind of took myself out of it. And YouTube is kind of like my way back into the entertainment industry because before YouTube, I just wanted to be a regular person. Like, let's, I, I literally. Let's talk about the YouTube thing. Like, how long have you been doing the YouTube thing? About two years now. Two years, that's a pretty, that's a pretty yeah. long time. So did it, did it come like with a learning curve? Or did you kind of like have to go read a book? You know, some people look at the little ads on the side and mm -hmm. see, some people say it, some people say it doesn't. Um, well, it was a learning tool. Um, if anything, I learned to stay true to my brand and not just try to, you know, emulate what is working and to focus on the positivity and the severity of relationships. I can give my opinion, but what, differenti what differentiates me from other YouTubers that review shows is that I talk about the character mm -hmm. that I see. I never attack the person mm -hmm. because I always want to leave that window open of we never know later mm -hmm. on down the line I may need that person or I may need to build that relationship. So that's been a learning tool. Also, just what I say, you mm -hmm. know, and how I say it. I can still be funny and curse and do all of what I need to do, but do it in a in a positive light. Yeah. This is so many people that are right now, especially kids, are huge mm -hmm. on YouTube. And not just that, people are watching. Yeah. I've gotten DMs from people, and, and I know it was real because after I would get the DM, and they would see that I saw it, they would mysteriously delete it. And they would tell me stuff like, people are watching you. I know Mona's watching, I know VH1 is watching. Um, I've actually got approached to do some corresponding work as mm -hmm. far as like through my channel. So. I have to keep all of that in mind. And I also, like, because of my spiritual background, I always want to never go too far. Like, I want to be able to do what I do and still be able to go to the stage. That's a hard to. thing to do. It's for anybody hard. to yeah. have their beliefs, their religion, and not go far. Because you, once you get into something that you love, you get wrapped up in it. So yeah. you're just like, is this 
is this too far or is this not too far? Because, you know, if you turn down that one thing, you probably never get work again. And it's probably sometimes I have said <laughs> things that are, you know, extremely controversial, but I try not to make that a trend or a habit. You know, sometimes I will go, you know, below the belt, but if you don't make it a habit, then it, it's not really who you are. Mm -hmm. And you have that, you know, that safe haven, but it, it's hard. Like you said, it's really hard to eat in that line because not many people are welcome. You know, once they cross over to the worldly side, the church is done with them. Yeah. Yeah. It happens. And then with me being gay, it's like a, a double, you yeah. know, lash across my back. But um, I, I just think, just stay authentic to who you are. You know, if it's truly who you are, people see that you're not putting on the front. Yeah. Then I think sometimes that'll work in your favor, like more times than not. Because me personally, like what I say in my channel, if you piss me off, I will say to you, <laughs> like it's just it's who I am. And when, once people realize that you know this baby ain't putting on the front, this is just who he is. Right. Like then people are more welcoming, and it's not like you're trying to put on. I just I just feel like people just really got their soft skin on. Right? Everybody really. The world is too sensitive. Skin. I right. talk to my cousin about that all the time. Mm -hmm. We're all too That's sensitive. True. And he brought, up a, he brought up a valid point. He said, where's Mad TV? Whereas, you know, a Mad TV and Living Color, men on film, that would never fly in today's world. Because everybody would be, oh, backlash from this, backlash from this. I remember Rihanna did a cover, I think it was Harper's Bazaar, and they just up, it, they just her up in, like, Chinese or Asian wear. Hmm. They was like, oh, my gosh, she's misappropriate. Like, why is the world so sensitive? Everybody. Like, you can't say anything about Nothing. it. You lose money, your job, your career, yeah. anything. Say we got freedom of speech. We but don't. we don't. We don't. Everything we don't. is at a cost. <laughs> so, I know we talked about your, your uh, but how do you feel about the Houston raps? Because <laughs> well, you was a rapper, you've been in it for a minute. How do you feel about this scene? Okay, well, I'll be fair. So, um, like I said, I can say this, so don't be coming for me because I do bite back. But, um, since 2008, the scene, the Houston rap scene to me changed. And I say that because I didn't see a lot of us working together. I'm just going to put it out there like that. I do see more of us working together now. So the times has changed. It was really um, every man for himself. You was kind of lucky if you was in the same grace as somebody. You know, it wasn't a lot of people just pulling you in to work with J-Dog or Slim Thug or something like that. I was able to be in the studio, studio with them because I was just grinding that hard and I knew people that knew people but other people didn't have that access. Yeah. Now, it's, you even see Slim Thug jumping on indie artist songs that's not even just out there on the radio showing love like that. You know what I'm saying? So the scene has changed in that aspect a lot. I feel like it's more diverse. I see more people being more original out here as opposed to everybody that was doing the same thing a few years ago. Um, I think what we do lack, though, is like real major opportunities. Like we don't have just like we have talent showcases, but what's at that talent showcase other than me networking with you? Yeah. Who could take Miss Blue to the next level? We need more A and R scouts. We need more um, people. You know, uh, people that can put you in a position to actually. I just don't feel like it's enough of the business in the South that's happening for anybody to learn to be mm -hmm. able to put people on. Because it, you know, New York, it's New York, LA, they all around the labels, they, you know, everybody's all the way. Somebody's around for you to learn something. It's not yeah. enough people here for it's us, not. you know what I mean, for us to learn. It's not, and then the ones that are here, they move to Atlanta. Like what, besides record, like what major record label do we have here? That's mm. the only one that we have. Is yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the only one that we have. I mean, we have a little smaller ones that come up, but nobody's really putting money behind it, really pushing people out. I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, I'm not knocking anybody, but I'm just saying, as far as the resource, we have limited resources. Here. Yeah, we do. Absolutely. <laughs> we do. And I noticed that in Atlanta, people are more, they show more hospitality. Like, I, I would say the black dollar is more circulating. Yeah, and they don't oh, mind, yeah. they don't sure. mind collaborating or, you know. But they do have problems, though. Like, I tell people, like, people say that from now, I tell people to go to Atlanta and live there for a little bit. Like, when you go there, they have the same problems as us. It's mm. just that they can put it to the side for some money. I think, well, the reason why I said that was because I had went. But but I can understand what you're saying because they treated me that way. Mm. So I was probably like this high commodity because I was fresh. You know, they mm. didn't know. So when I came, I received all of that. And they were like, yeah, we can work together. All of this. It's the same way? Like if somebody from Atlanta told Right, you? right. No, that's real. That's yeah, real. That's serious. Yeah. And I think that that's a major problem that we don't help each other out. Like, we, we, we 
don't. I, I think that's a, a major problem. I, I really do. So, um, I have a buddy that says, uh, Ameka, he was like, asked the other day, uh, was Megan Thee Stallion supported on her come up or did Houston jump on her once she got nationally experienced? Oh, that's a good question. Okay, so, she was supported on her come up. Okay, so, I, I'm trying to see how I want to answer this. Just to be real, she was definitely supported because the numbers prove it. Okay, so she started at, I want to say, TSU, mm -hmm. and she had the college, like, lit behind her. So it's no way that they was not supporting her mm -hmm. for the numbers to be up there. So we're gonna we're gonna give Houston that mm -hmm. there are people that bandwagon and they probably didn't support until after the fact. Mm -hmm. But for the for the first time, I'm gonna say with her, I did see the support there. But she had an awesome team. She had an awesome yes, team like in the streets when she couldn't be in the streets and she was doing her not you know yeah. her book you know her book stuff. So um, I'm gonna say yeah, they they supported her. It hasn't been the same for. You know myself mm -hmm. and other female rappers, but she did get Houston support. She do got a big old team, though. Yeah, yeah don't she? <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. She did you see team. the street team? Yeah. Um, uh, her, uh, I, don't, I think it's her manager showed a picture of their uh, street team getting on the bus or a uh, video. It was like maybe I, I lost count. It was over fifteen of them. I feel like I feel like everybody that has a Rapper or doing a rapper, you should at least have at least 10 people around you because you know at least 10 people. That's you know what? Don't even say it, friend. So, we had a conversation, and somebody bought into the conversation because uh, she was talking about the importance of a manager and she wanted to have a manager. And she was just like, I need a manager to be the plug and to get me into most of these places because you know they still consider artists coming up as soliciting, and you know yeah. they <laughs> want to have a connection. Mm -hmm. And that person interjected. Until you are too busy to handle your own affairs, you don't need a manager. And I, I, I see that, but then I don't. Because of the fact of the manager being the plug, you can't, how can you just become a plug? You have to link with somebody who knows somebody. You have to network. You have to network. But what you just said, I wish you could have said a little bit louder, like in 2008. Because I wish I would have knew you in 2008 is what I'm saying. Because I said that so many times that... You can be so good and go hard. You can have Nicki Minaj bars, but if you don't have five or ten solid people on your team pushing you, getting your stuff out in the streets, going to club DJs, you just one man deep by yourself, and you're not going to be able to reach as many people. You're you're not going to really cause a buzz factor with just yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you're going to continue to get looked over. You have to have some type of team riding behind you, saying. Hey, I don't know about her, but my chick right over here, she go hard. She is the next best, best thing. And that's what I know for a fact. I know that's what she had. You know what I'm saying? And so. Do you feel like it's a bandwagon city? Oh, hell yeah. Houston? Yeah. Houston, okay. We can be. We are. Ain't no can be. We are. I we are. can be. And it's been happening for a while because Destiny's Child even spoke on it. I can say, yeah. Houston yeah. feel that they love who they love. And they yeah. Love. But they wait, they but, wait till you blow up though. Yeah, Disney Shot went to Atlanta, started working with Silent Partner and all of them. Just, when they came size, back, okay, they were just pushed out. Besides, let's say, the people that we grew up on that yeah. may have been coming out, okay. who that really came and, you know, they got bandwagon? Who didn't have the support and then blew up and got support from Houston? Uh -huh. Because how I feel about it, for, if you can make it out of Houston, you can mm -hmm. make it anywhere. So if you made it, you, you got some support somewhere. Yeah. No, so I'm just right like, who, who didn't? Because I feel like everybody that then came out to make then came up through that same line. So they knew line. everybody, been on everybody. So it's, it's well, you know what? Okay, maybe that's a very good way. No, no one ever pointed it out to me like that. So maybe it's more so, maybe not so much of a bandwagon. Even though I'm still kind of thinking that, but I think maybe it's more they just work with or rock with who they want to, if that makes sense. Because if Megan and uh, we've had Chameleon and Paul Wall, they all did come out. Mm -hmm. But we only supported them maybe because we knew they was on the rise. We knew they was about to get uh, picked up. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you're just a regular, I don't want to even say regular, but if you're just a artist that's been grinding, you could have been grinding for 10 years and they're not going to support you until they know, until they cease Somewhere, I feel like they knew these people were connected. Everybody knew when Powell and Chameleon came out, T. Ferris was that dude. Mm -hmm. He was putting on so many people, it was crazy. I remember somebody tried to lace me with Mike Jones to get, you know, put on with him back then. 
I, I you knew like, they were about to blow, blow up, so you're gonna ride with I feel like back then, like like I was saying, because we was on limited resources, everybody like growing up, we didn't we didn't know. Now since that younger generation, more people of our age are coming up and starting to take over those top mm -hmm. areas, mm -hmm. you start to see more people get on slowly but surely because they're making those connections. They're yeah. going to places, they're going to the essence, they're going to the BT awards, you know what I mean? They're yeah. checking mm -hmm. out. It's a lot of people like there's a lot of PR people in Houston right now. Beast. For us putting people on. Oh no, I, I yeah. you. But where are they? You have to be but to you know what? Though, to now know these people. I'm starting are. to think about it. Um, maybe Houston is just one of those cities, sort of like um, you know, like shows I'm at the Apollo, to where like you have to earn their respect. You have to earn their appreciation and their support because. It just it. seems like Houston is like you got to be consistent, right? And I also everybody. think Houston is just like. This mumble rap, this play crap that's going on, never, you know, never. that's not gonna rock down that's here. Never rock. So <laughs> come with okay. it or don't. Okay. I can say that, but y'all gonna make me. A, I'm, I'm not gonna name drop, but because you right though, you gotta. Earn I'm it. not gonna name drop, but I will say this. Like I said, I've been doing this for a decade. Okay, mm -hmm. I know for a fact that's not true. It's not that they earn. You gotta earn their respect. It's not even that. When I first started out, I was rejected by so many uh, record labels out here and um, radio stations, mainstream radio stations, for no reason. The reasons would be so basic. I would come in there with my team. I was signing Sideways Records at the time. I came in there with, a, with, with my team, DJT, and we went up to uh, you know 97.9 and a bunch of stations. I'm not ashamed to say it. I can repeat my story twice. And so I went up there, and it was more like... Um, at the song, at the time I was promoting the song and Girl Fight was out, Brooke Valentine, and they was like, I mentioned her name, but it was like no beef or nothing like that. And they was just like, nah, you shouldn't have slugged at Brooke Valentine, or nah, we can't have two girls out at the same time. And then when I put out another hot track, and it was Candy, Red, and a bunch of other females out, and I tried to hit up some OGs that had like radio stations to get my stuff spun. And it was like, ah, oh, nah, well, we can't work with you because we work with so-and-so from Swisher House. She's the first lady. Uh, we see you grinding. We respect that. But, you know, we, we can't be pushing too many females at the same time. So I have a different perspective because I've actually lived through it and I've been through it. And I know for a fact it has nothing to do with them respecting your grind. They choose who they want to support. They choose who they want to be down with, rock with movement and stuff like that and or uh, and sometimes you are blocked and yeah, i can say that because i have people like i say i have people in my corner that's probably watching on my facebook too that know they were with me with some of the times and i was just just constantly blocked and i was just like i rap too like why this chick got why does she have something to do with me well she's out already her single is on the radio and i'm just like okay so i don't know y'all when y'all say that like that's just i can't make it up it's like my no i feel you but do you think that that radio situation or the radio situations that you've gone through were in reference to like the payola scandal that you Oh yeah, because at the time I, I was dumb, like blinded. I honestly didn't know about payola and stuff and I don't think DJT had them racks like to be like under the table. I didn't know about that. So if that was a major uh, key in that, then I'll say yeah. And the reason why I said what I said was because like if you listen to the people that's blowing up now, like they got it. Like, yeah, uh, sure. listen to Ken the Man, like that. He be like, that is a pop. Like, anywhere in Houston, if they put that on, gay, straight, or indifferent, the club is going up. Like, big old freak. So maybe, like, it's a combination of you having the right team and then you just having that solid one, like, yeah, that's right. boom. Right. And, and that, that again goes into the team because uh, sometimes it takes a team of people when you're listening to beats to be like, something about that bitch. You know, like, Maybe they hear something you don't, you know. So I think the team goes just further than promotion. Like you just need a team to operate it. Okay. And Ken the Man has a, a really nice team You're too. Right. But all the people that y'all they go outside of Houston. Mm. Oh yeah, you like have to step outside. Yeah, of we've been talking about getting and I had and I, South I, by I South had West. done that in a minute. Like that, I was like confining myself to Houston because people be telling me you can't step outside of Houston and. You don't got Houston on your side, Shay. You're not ready for that. Wait, let me ask you this though, friend. The people who told you that, were they people who were already famous? Somewhat. They were famous and they told you that? Somewhat. So they might have been trying to hold you back. They were saying you needed the people who you, who you know on your side. That's what they were saying. They were saying, you know, regardless, they say, regardless of what I say, people know me and ride with me out here. Mm -hmm. 
So get them people to just start showing up and supporting me and pushing my stuff. But I have other people that's like, nah, you need to go outside of Houston. You okay. need to get to Question. It. Yes. Coming from me to an artist. Okay. Yeah. When does that stop? Okay, so we can constantly say that. But what's your next move to build on top of that? To build on top of what? Uh, you say they hating on you, they stopping you and all that, but what's next? Like, you have to be able to break, like, because everybody get that. I mean, yeah. People tell right, me that. Right, like, right. what's the next move next to show them that I do have what it takes? <sighs> I say the next move is... You just got to put it in their face at this point. I, you yeah, know I was what? just about to say that. That's, what, that's what we say. I get that all the time on my channel, and I just be like, okay. Same place, same time. Y'all going to catch me Tuesday talking about love and hip-hop. Like, I don't care at this point. Because I got a goal in my sweetheart, and if you ain't with it, then you're not a part of that goal. Like, you're not a part of that journey. Mm -hmm. And I definitely think we need to have Sister Girl, like, in um, uh, South by Southwest. I oh, yeah, definitely I'll definitely be. I'm, I'm working on that should. now, that, like, the South by South uh, West line up to get on the stage with, like, the bigger people, though. Not, Absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. not, like, on a local stage. Because so the I'm, music is high. Like, go it, off is like a yeah, summer I'm saying, anthem. That right, music is we, high. And then, like you said, though, not... Get, not just running this song in Houston. Even mm -hmm. the producer was like, "Blue, when 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 are you going to a different you know place mm -hmm. to promote?" Mm -hmm. So I'm already. Uh, we talked about Atlanta. Yeah. We want to hit New York. We want to start hitting like the uh, even Austin is in yeah, Dallas. Dallas. Yeah, Dallas. So and then um, when you're on Spotify, you see your analytics. Mm -hmm. And so I'm gonna start going to those cities. They say go to where your fans are. Right, uh, yeah. right now, New York and. What is it? New York, Dallas, and somebody else is killing it with mm -hmm. streaming me. Mm -hmm. So I need to go where my fans are. Right. We're going to check this single out. I'll make sure yes. I get that real. Yes. And yes. Yes. And oh, yeah. Visual. Throw a video out. Yeah. So we want to shoot a video. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And like you said, keep putting it in their face. Y'all yeah. going to see me. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not going to stop. Yeah, like she was talking about her Spotify numbers. <laughs> Uh, recently, I was promoting a podcast and I checked out her SoundCloud numbers. Mm -hmm. Her top three songs alone is over 20k. And I didn't even mm -hmm. realize that and that's my stuff. And that's just the top three songs. So it's like the numbers are there. It's just like she got to stay consistent with it. Good stuff. And see, now I feel like I got some new team members. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You just, you interviewing me, you know you. what I'm saying? We connected. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, so man, but um, before we run up, because we run up on yes. time. Y'all go ahead and put out y'all social media where people can get in contact with y'all, where they can listen to y'all, where they can catch up, follow up on y'all, all that. Okay, well, uh, for me, my IG is the Cats Me Out official, all the way spelled out, no abbreviations or anything. Uh, Twitter is the Cats Me Out TV because somebody had took the Cats Me Out official, and I'm going to find out who. And um, from there, you can get to my, my YouTube channel, and of course, I have clips on my, my Twitter and my Instagram. And yeah, just stay connected. And I am forever Miss Blue on everything. So forever MZ Blue like the color. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you name it. Like I said, stream go off, y'all, okay? Oh, oh Make this and the Trail Talk thing. Podcast, sorry. Um, the Trail Talk Podcast at the Trail Talk Podcast on Instagram. You're kicking it with G on your favorite station. The perfect station. 92 KELZ, the only station with new music, new artists, new sound.